Hello, welcome to Mr. Paul's Pantry. I'm Mr. Paul, and if you're new here, a very, very warm welcome. Uh, and a big warm welcome to all my returning visitors, which are getting more and more by the week. I think my followers are now, uh, subscribers are now standing at about 32,000 or something like that. So thank you very much for your support. Now, this week I'm doing something very close to my heart. I'm making a pie because pies are my passion. When I had my bakery in England for many years and also here in Spain, pies were the mainstay of the business. I made all kinds of pies, sweet, savoury, large, small, whatever you want. So today I'm making one of my favourites. I, I, I'm, the ones I've made in the past have been things you've requested. Uh, I'm requesting this one myself. It's a meat and potato pie a Yorkshire meat and potato pie and I call it a Yorkshire one because it's what I've always made in my bakery and meat and potato pies are enjoyed all over England and Wales and Scotland but most of them have carrots, peas or something else thrown in. I don't do that. It's a meat and potato pie and some years ago when um, new regulations came out lots of bakeries had to start calling them potato and meat pies simply because there was more potato than meat. We didn't. We always called them meat and potato and had many visits from Trading Standards uh, to try and get us to change that. They couldn't do that, they couldn't make us change it because it does contain more meat than potato. Okay, it's potato, meat and a little onion for a little flavour, that's all. Now, what I haven't done, I haven't uh, decided, uh, I'm sorry, what I have decided to do is not make the pastry on video. I think it's boring keep making the same thing every time that the, the uh, recipe requires pastry. I have made it on several occasions. If you want to look at my recipe for, for pastries, go underneath the video. I'll put a link there to it and it has all my pastry recipes there. Short crust, hot crust, sweet pastry, things like that. For this pie, I'm using short crust pastry and um, nothing more to say. We'll just get on and hit show you the ingredients, okay? My meat, potatoes, onion, mustard powder, garlic, flour, red wine, Worcestershire sauce, beef stock, bay leaves and some fresh thyme. If you're using dried herbs, always use less, less, little less, because they're very strong, the herbs, to your taste, because you will be tasting it before you finish the, the dish off. So a little salt and pepper, of course, if it's required. That all depends, as I've told you before, how salty your stock is. If you've made your own stock, it won't have any salt in it. If you've bought it, it might have stock in or it might not. It'll tell you on the package. But if you're using stock cubes, which are quite all right, don't forget they always, without fail, have salt in them. So be very careful with the salt afterwards, okay? If you're using stock cubes. So there are the ingredients. Uh, I'll, we'll get on with it now and I'll show you what we, go, what we do next once I've prepared the vegetables. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a little, not a lot, a little salt and pepper into my meat before I do anything else and I'm using white pepper for this I do prefer white pepper when I'm doing beef rather than black pepper there we are just give that a little mix around and then the next thing we have to do is to get a frying type pan, a frying pan or similar, hot. It must be very, very hot. Better take this rubber glove off or I'll burn it. Okay, very, very hot. And these pieces are going to go in here now. If you want to put some, a little oil in the bottom, you can. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It depends how much fat there is on the meat. And there isn't a lot on here, so I might just pop a little bit in. Don't overcrowd the pan. We need to car caramelise that now, okay? caramelise the meat before we start doing anything else. It is a little lean for me, so I'll just put a little drop of oil in the middle. Yeah. And the secret to this is, don't start fiddling about with it, giving it a poke, a dig and a shake and a prod. 
just leave it until it starts to colour on one side. Then you can start turning it over, but your pan must be on full heat all the time. When you see it smoking, that means it's hot enough. A lot of people think that's going to burn everything, but it won't. Don't worry about it. So you can see it's all nicely browning now. I've done mine in three batches. I haven't let you see the whole thing because it took me six minutes to do the three batches. Okay, so it's all nicely browning and that's all going to be put now to one side until we need it. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the pan on and I've put a little drop of oil, about a tablespoon, and a tablespoonful of butter in there, which I'm melting now. Uh, I'm getting, getting uh, melted down. And then the flour and the uh, mustard powder is going to go in there. We're going to make sort of a roux, like we make when we're making white sauce and things, except this is going to be a brown sauce, not a white sauce, because if we're making a stew type thing, you see, with, with a pie. So, about a tablespoonful of each in there. You really want the same amount of oil and fat, or fat, butter, or something like that, as you have flour. And I've got two tablespoonfuls of flour. So I'm putting that in there next. And then I'll get my whisk. I like using a whisk for this rather than a wooden spoon because it prevents the lumps forming. So we need to now cook this gently over a high heat until the flour is cooked. So otherwise when we finish the pies and everything the gravy will have a floury sort of taste to it in your mouth and we don't want that. So we're making a roux. So we're now going to add some of the stock, a little at a time, whisk it round, and you will see it start to thicken in the bottom. Can you see that? It's starting to thicken up in the bottom now. Add a little bit more of the stock, whisk it round so it doesn't go lumpy. You see the consistency now? I'm not sure whether you can see that or not. You can, yes. Okay. Inside we go. Put the rest of it in. Keep going till it's all absorbed. Then we're going to add the red wine. Equal quantities of red wine and stock. Bring that gently to the boil and then we're going to add the onion. And the garlic. Give that another stir. Need the whisk for that now. There we are. Now we're going to bring it up to the boil, put a lid on it, and let it simmer now for about 10 or 15 minutes. So this has been simmering away now for 15 minutes. Nice and soft, the onions now. We're going to add back there the meat. And all the juices that's come out of the meat, that's all going back in there. And then we're going to add our Worcester sauce, probably about a tablespoonful. That's all. And also, what I've done with the um, herbs, I've made like a bouquet garni. I've tied the... Um, bay leaves around the sprig of thyme so that when we come to take it out I'm not fishing around for bits and pieces we can just lift it out in one piece like that. I'm going to turn that up and bring it back to the boil now the, now the um, meat's going 
The potatoes aren't going in at this stage. We're going to put the lid back on and simmer that now for another one hour until the meat is tender. It might take a little longer, but we'll check it at one hour. So I'll see you then. Right, here we are now. My meat has taken actually one hour and 15 minutes to soften. Yours may take a little longer or not quite as long. It depends on the meat. You can't tell. Meat's always different. So it's all nicely cooked there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the potatoes which I've diced like that. Give them a little stir. And then I'm going to let it come back to the simmer as it was before. Put the lid on. It's coming back to the simmer now. Put the lid on. Turn it down, back to simmer as it was. And leave that for five minutes only. Five minutes. Now after the five minutes we take that from the heat and put it to one side and leave it to cool completely. I personally leave it now overnight. We did in the bakery as well. We always made our filling for meat and potato pies, steak pies etc the day before. So we weren't putting warm filling into the pastry because that only results in soggy pastry. Uh, especially at the bottom, it doesn't cook properly. So it needs to be completely cold, but we're just going to leave those potatoes cooking now for just five minutes because remember, they will be cooking again for 30 minutes when they go in the oven. Okay? So I'll be back when this is cooled down and I'll show you what we do making the rest of the pies. So here's my filling. It's been cooling overnight. I let it cool and before I went to bed I popped it in the fridge but it was quite cool then and as you can see there's no liquid left it's all all the gravy is set nicely around the potatoes and the meat and that's how we want it all right I'll put that to one side for a moment we start with the pastry cases like this I'm just doing one to start off with and you need a hundred grams I'm not doing this on the scale because I do know how much this scoop weighs I know how much the filling is needed in here there we are and I'm going to just wet the outside of the um, outside of the pastry with a little water Pop on the lid, press it down, and then with a little sharp knife, uh, back of a knife, not the sharp side of the knife, a back of a knife, I'm going to just trim that round like that. And when you've trimmed that round, you can leave it like that if you want, or you can get the tines of a fork and make it fancy, or you can do thumb and finger like I'm doing just press the two edges together like that it's it doesn't matter as long as they're sealed so we're not going to get any leaks and if you want you can make a little air uh, vent there so that the steam can come out now that needs egg washing if you're going to put a vent like that take a tip from me and don't put the vent until after you've put the egg wash on otherwise the egg wash might block that up and it might start trying to boil out at the sides so egg wash it first then make your little vent in the middle and in the oven it goes there we are and we'll roll this out for the base now if you have tins that stick remember if the, you need to spray uh, spray them or grease them inside most most times once you use them a lot they don't stick much now this pastry if you're not sure needs to be if you're in the uk about as thick as a pound coin if you're in europe about as thick as a a, a euro coin now we put that on there and lift this so it drops inside we don't stretch the pastry just lift it so it drops inside. It doesn't matter if it folds, like you see it's folding some like that. Don't worry about that. Just get it into the bottom and then press to the sides. 
So there's no air. I missed a little bit there, patch it up. And there's a little bit there I can patch up with. Look, I, I didn't see that. Just make a patch on there if it's necessary. Because remember, the lid is going to stick onto that. So then we put in the filling. And in my case, it's 100 grams. There we are. And then we come to the lid. Now take the pastry for the lid. There's nothing precision about this. My pastry is sticking a bit today because it's quite warm in my kitchen today. Normally I don't have to do to, to, to flour it like that. So there we are. Wet round the edge of the pastry case. On with the lid. Just touch it down gently. And then trim it off. With the back of a knife. Just like that. There we are. And you can, sorry, crimp it if you want like this. Or use the back of a fork, the tines of a fork. It doesn't make a lot of difference. As long as it's sealed down the edge. There we go. Now, remember, if you're going to put a vent in it, egg wash it first. And then cut your vent in the top like that. And that's ready to go in the oven. And we cook these now at 180 for about 35 minutes. Probably 40, it just depends. 35 to 40 minutes. And I'll do the others, pop them in the oven, and I'll come back when we're done. Well, here they are. They've been out of the oven now about 15 minutes, just handleable. I can just pick the tins up there. They're still hot, but as you can see, quite a nice, um, quite a nice pie there. And if I tip it out, nice dry bottom, no soggy bottoms at all. And if you notice, I didn't grease my tins and they haven't stuck at all. There they are. Nice ready to eat. I let them cool a little bit more and I'll cut one and let's have a look inside it. Right, we'll have a look inside and see what's, uh, what's to do with it. Hmm. The pastry is absolutely feather light. I don't know whether you can see that or not. Feather light is the pastry. And absolutely delicious. Well, I'm going to sit and enjoy one of those for my tea tonight. It's all I have time for now. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, go underneath, give it a like, thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, press the subscribe button. And when the little bell appears, press that as well. And YouTube will tell you every time I put up a new video. Okay, if you have any questions, suggestions or uh, comments, leave those in the comments section below also. You'll see the recipe underneath the, res underneath the video. And I'll also have it on my website as well. Uh, it's Mr. Paul saying bye for now and I'll see you next time. Bye.